On today's show, I've got some sad news for Formula E. Kia updates its information around the EV6 and you could win just by subscribing to the show. Find out more in a moment. G'day, my name's Chris, and thanks for coming along. If you want to see more content like this, please do consider joining me over here on Patreon, where you get regular news, behind the scenes, polls, and a lot more. And I want to say a big thank you to my producers, Adam Tyson, Alan Burnt, Ashley Hill, Chaotic Media Technology, MN ICT Specialist, Nigel Farrier, and Tessa in the Gong. And speaking of producers, Patreon, and subscribing, I'm running a bit of a competition where you could win this. This is EV Armour's centre console wrap for the Tesla Model 3. That's the, like the first version that came out several years ago and only up until recently did Tesla change the centre console. So if you've got one of those and you'd like to get this for free as well as one month free on Patreon as a producer, what you need to do is subscribe below and put in the comments, yes please. And if you win, you're gonna get this and a month for free as well. Total package is like more than $50 Australian. And yeah, I'll ship this little baby out to anywhere in the world. So again, if you're interested, very simple to do. I'll put some instructions down below. It's only gonna be open for one week. And next Monday on the new show, I'll be publishing the final result and I'll notify the winner directly. So yeah, make sure you subscribe, leave the comment, yes please, and good luck. All right, let's do a quick round of bites. I've got a bad feeling, folks. Formula E appears to be on the way out. Last week, Mercedes and Audi exited stage left. That follows Renault and BMW leaving just Porsche, Nissan, Jaguar, Neo, Mahindra, and Citroen sub-brand DS. Whilst neither company gave any firm reasons for the departure, recalling like on the news I put out about a week ago, how Audi's got to now focus its efforts on going electric in the Dakar rally. Uh, follow the link up here somewhere, folks. I think it's concerning that the electric version of Formula One isn't doing so well. They only found it like in 2011, and the first race was in Beijing, yeah, Beijing in 2014. And attendance figures were very low at the start, improved, and then we had the pandemic. And I just think that um, the business model emulating what Formula One is now isn't right because, well, let's face it, Formula One, if you know its history, started out very much as a grassroots thing and then very quickly built up to the guy. Like, Gantuan, media, expensive, all that sort of stuff, stuff that goes with it. So uh, again, I still would like just to see Formula One convert to electric, rally, Indy. Um, uh, yeah, it, every single motorsport to electric would be awesome. But uh, this is, I think, a sad state of affairs. And when you're getting major European brands, brands that people would love and, you know, the people who are very brand loyal, when they learn about their favorite brand, uh, departing this space, um, and but still continue on with ICE cars in the uh, Formula One, it's not a good look. And uh, I do hope that you know Audi and Mercedes do come back to this uh, Formula E, but I'm not holding out much hope for it. You know who's great? You are. And Elon, he thinks that Robin Denholm is great too. For those who might might be unfamiliar, this is. Miss Denholm, and she's an Aussie. Yeah, fair dinkum Aussie. And she's actually been on the board of Tesla for about seven years now. And following this infamous tweet by Elon and SEC's ruling that he had to step down as chairman of the board of Tesla, Miss Denholm has actually been chair of Tesla and several of its subcommittees for about the last three years. And it turns out that she's doing a great job. And we learned this last week in an SEC proxy filing that Tesla wants Robin Denholm to continue as chair of its board of directors. This, I think, is actually a good decision as it frees up Elon to do his engineering thing, first principle thing, still be CEO, and have the support of someone like Miss Denholm who can oversee like corporate and regulatory and accounting and other vital functions that actually keep a very large and very complex company like Tesla going. 
Western Australia will soon be home to the longest electric highway in Australia, with its government announcing 45 locations, 90 fast chargers and 45 additional backup chargers will be installed in this massive state. I mean, take a look at this map. It's impressive. And for my international viewers, look, I'll plonk Germany, France and the UK on it, just for comparison. Once complete, get this by 2024, <clears throat> yeah, the average distance between charging stations will be around about 160 kilometers. A tender for charging station is, to, is expected to go out to market by the end of this year. And I hope that those, you know, 45 or 90, whatever number you want to pick, will be out in this massive state of uh, WA sooner than later. Last week, the Citizens Own Renewable Energy Network Australia, or Carina as you may know them, achieved several major milestones. They surpassed more than $500,000 in donations, crowdfunded a total of $824,403 in interest free loans to fund 43 projects around Australia. That means collectively they've launched 43 projects which would have a significant impact on emissions and get us towards that magical net zero carbon emissions. Karina revealed in the media release that they've avoided an estimated 2,308 megawatt hours of grid electricity. That's equivalent to 2,300,000 kilowatt hours of energy. In our home, we use like only 15 kilowatt hours per day on average. So about 5,000, 400 and so per year. Dividing that into Karina's total, that means it would take our house 420 years to reach that impressive number. Great numbers, right? Oh, and it gets better. This amount of carbon emission reduction is equivalent to 200 average households using 100% renewable energy instead of grid electricity. Carina was founded in 2013 and run almost entirely by volunteers, operates Australia's longest running donor driven revolving fund for practical climate action. They use funds raised to offer interest free loans to not for profit or community organisations and help them reduce their carbon emissions via things like rooftop solar systems, energy efficient products, replacing gas appliances with efficient electric alternatives, and obviously replacing fossil fuel vehicles with electric vehicles. If you want to know more about their work, please do follow the link down below and consider supporting them. It generally will help and let's say your $100 you put in today will not only go towards let's say one project, but it'll come back around again and again and again. You get, you get the idea. I'm starting to see more electric trucks being developed and here's one that is obviously in the middle of development. Messy Yep. This is Volta Trucks, Volta minus one. It will be the world's first purpose-built, fully electric, 16-ton commercial vehicle, designed specifically for inner city logistics. Volta says that the uncommercial bodywork of the prototype is purely designed to protect the development driver from the elements when the vehicle is moving at speed, and that the production vehicle will actually feature a cargo box design. Three companies, all the same. Voxel, aka Holden to us Aussies, which left the market a few years ago by the way, and GM, the, really the parent company here, have announced that they'll be holding a premiere of the latest addition to its award-winning electric van range, the Combo E and the Movano E, at the commercial vehicle show in the UK. The Movano E, a large light commercial vehicle, has a cargo capacity of 17 cubic meters with a range of 222 kilometers. That's on WLTP folks, so let's just say 180 to 190 seriously. The Vauxhall Combo E can travel 273 clicks with thanks to its 50 kilowatt hour battery and obviously smaller size. Vauxhall will also be debuting at the commercial vehicle show, the new Vivaro E. It's actually hydrogen, which will be available in left-hand drive markets from the end of 2021 and in the UK, right-hand drive early 2023. But obviously, I don't want to waste your time and mine of going to something that will be here tomorrow and gone the day after. 
Kia has released more details of its upcoming EV6. With an impressive 528 km of range on a single charge, ultra-fast 800 volt charging, like 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes, with thanks to dual 800 and 400 volt electrical architecture, and bi-directional battery usage, meaning the EV6 can power household appliances and other EVs. Talk about a power move. I'm really excited to see this good looking car. Here's some new stuff that I haven't covered before. It's got a long wheelbase of 2,900 millimeters and minimal front and rear overhangs, which should translate to greater cabin space, similar to that of larger vehicles. When filled up on an 800 volt charger, the EV6 can receive maximum power of 239 kilowatts. That's this many watts for comparison. The EV6 comes in two different battery sizes, either the standard range at 558 kilowatt hours or long range of 77.4 kilowatt hours. And interestingly, the UK model, aka Australian offering, will only see the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery being offered. This is not good. Think of the, that pricing, will, that size will mean pricing will most likely put this car in Australia in the mid 80s, which isn't a good thing. A feature that will no doubt be very popular is this integrated charging control unit or ICCU, which controls built-in bi-directional uh, charging capabilities. It can, it can push 3.6 kilowatts of power to, from the vehicle, to other devices, meaning occupants can charge electrical items on the go, like phones, laptops, and more. Plus, if you're into glamping, the, VT, the V2L connector is water resistant. So when you next go camping, maybe bring your fridge, your TV, and other household creature comforts. Yeah, I don't like camping either. Kia says that when doing vehicle to vehicle charging, the EV6 own battery is preserved by ensuring that a state of charge does not fall below 20%. With the Australian release right around the corner, you can check out Kia's website right now and register your interest. Alrighty, that will do it for today's show. I hope you have enjoyed it. Now remember once again, I am running the competition that you could actually win this just by subscribing and putting the comments, yes please. And not only do you get this, but also one month free on Patreon at producer level. All up all told, more than $50 worth of value and yeah, it's open to anyone, anyone in the world. Just be a subscriber and put that comment there. Otherwise, please, you be good and you be green.